When you think of your health, do you sometimes wonder who's looking out for you? This department's mission is to improve the health status of Californians, and I really use that as my touchstone. This job, the state health director, is one of the most powerful jobs in the state. They can quarantine anybody, the director. The director can pull food off of any shelf in any store. I believe very strongly at the time that that relationship was really critical to advancing uh, a common mission associated with improving the health and well-being of the people of California. There's no doubt that it has benefited the health uh, of the state and, uh, uh, you know, it, it was the right thing to do. It not only gets very personal for you individually and did for me as a director, but you also are really aware of the people in the department. We had the best staff that you could possibly think of here at Department of Health Services. Everything here is about how will it incrementally or dramatically improve the health status of California. For the last 29 years, through five California governors, the California Department of Health Services has focused on these issues and others that impact the health of all Californians. Governor Jerry Brown created the Department of Health Services in 1978. In keeping with his campaign commitment to include women and people of color in his administration, he chose as the first director Beverly Myers, a non-physician, for this key and influential position. It's my view of public health. The, uh, the health part is the technical professional side of, of public health. But the public side is the policy political side. And public health by definition has got to merge these two. Beverly came with a commitment to the underserved and a desire to expand availability of health services. Her leadership won national recognition as she set the stage for a department that would ultimately have an enormous impact on key public health issues. We've been able to get away and to prove ourselves with just being good technicians and good technical professional people. But until the good technicians and the good professionals learn how to handle the politics of the situation and to deal with that, public health is not going to be successful in maintaining the direction it's been going in. I think that is the advice that I would give people in public health generally and those who are attempting to provide leadership to public health. Governor Duke Majin selected an attorney with years of health care experience as his director. Peter Rank oversaw substantial Medi-Cal reforms that resulted in significant cost savings. We did a number of ideas that I had brought from the private sector in operating the Medi-Cal program a little, a little more like a business, and we did have massive savings, two, three hundred million dollars a year, I think. Under his watch, DHS participated in the most aggressive program in history to pursue the cleanup of toxic pollution and he managed a rapid response to dangerous chemicals in our food supply. I would have a staff meeting every 8 a.m. every morning, and when I came in, my uh, public health director, Don Lyman, said, you won't believe this, but we have tested uh, various shelves all over the state, and there's ethylene dibromide, a cancer-causing agent, um, 10,000 times the safe level. And, of course, these were cookie and cake mixes which children would eat. So I had to brief the governor and then contact Doughboy and Betty Crocker immediately because we couldn't allow these to be on the, on the shelves more than 24 hours. This job, the state health director, is one of the most powerful jobs in the state. They can quarantine anybody, the director. The director can pull food off of any shelf in any store. So we asked the, um, had trouble getting the attention of the companies. Uh, we were a very pro-business administration, as we should be and uh, they were reluctant to believe that I would do anything definite. By the time the next day arrived, they were in my office, and uh, when they walked through the, uh, the door to the building, there were 20 news uh, agencies with uh, uh, satellite dishes, and they could hardly get through. So they presented to me, just because it causes cancer in rats, it doesn't hurt children. And I gave them uh, 24 hours and uh, told them that I would either if they hadn't voluntarily recalled their products, I would take every box of every caking, cake mix and cooking mix off every shelf in the state of California. At 11.30, 30 minutes before, they voluntarily did that. So it was good that we were able to arrange something like that um, without having to take governmental action. Mm -hmm. And it was done in every state of the union then. A young, dynamic, and visionary medical doctor, Ken Kaiser, arrived at a pivotal time in public health. His five-point plan focused on AIDS, teen pregnancy, preventable trauma, groundwater pollution, and lifestyle diseases, including smoking. He boldly created high-powered marketing strategies to combat big tobacco and literally fired a shot heard round the world. 
From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. We begin tonight with a pioneering effort against smoking. California became the first state to launch a massive advertising campaign to convince those who smoke and those who could start that smoking is a dirty and a dangerous habit. Yes, we are launching an unprecedented, publicly funded health education campaign. It's direct, it's forceful, and yes, I expect it's going to be controversial. We want people to see what tobacco use really is. It's dumb, it's dirty, and it's deadly. But when asked about his greatest challenges, Dr. Kaiser talked about laying the foundation for today's anti-terrorism activities. We had the largest uh, pesticide poisoning incident in North American history uh, on uh, July 4th, 1985, uh, when I had to ban the sale of watermelons uh, in, throughout the state of California uh, because of uh, illegal uh, use of a pesticide, aldicarb, uh, that ultimately resulted in more than 1,300 known uh, poisonings and we believe a half a dozen uh, deaths. Uh, but it's a, you know, as I look at that incident, I mean, there were, were many ironies. I mean, banning watermelons on the 4th of July, uh, a very un-American thing to do. But it's uh, actually actual great scenario today when we think about uh, terrorist uh, incidents in food. And uh, this is in many ways exactly how one would present where we had uh, started off in the early morning with a few cases in Lake County and then there were some in the Valley and then there were some in Los Angeles and and before long we had hundreds of cases spread out throughout the state and uh, the only common thing was that the people had eaten watermelons. In his six-year tenure Dr. Kaiser moved managed care forward and started the baby cow program that urged at-risk low-income pregnant women to receive prenatal care early and regularly in order to reduce the percentage of low birth weight babies and infant mortality in California. Dr. Molly Joel Coy worked with Governor Pete Wilson just when the state of California experienced a 15 billion dollar budget shortfall. It wasn't a new idea to have to deal with bad times, and I thought that the approach the administration took in terms of balancing an increase in taxes for seven billion and seven billion in cuts was a very reasonable approach to a horrible situation. Of course, I was disappointed personally that you, know, you have to deal with that, but it also created a burning platform for a lot of the big changes we wanted to make. So, in a strange way, it had. Um, upsides. If you want to change things, it's very hard to do it when there's lots of money floating around. The department's data tracking systems show that far fewer adult Californians were still smoking. But the bad news was that the smoking habit was still strong in our multicultural and low socioeconomic communities. So Dr. Coy launched the first anti-tobacco ads targeting these groups. <laughs> Dr. Coy worked to establish the Office of Multicultural Health that serves as the department's focal point for improved planning and coordination of activities and programs related to racial and ethnic populations in California. She also created the Office of Women's Health to guide women's health policy in an effective and comprehensive fashion to reduce preventable disease and injury among women and girls in California. I think we laid out a number of new directions that were very important. The Baby Cal program and Medi-Cal managed care. Within Medi-Cal managed care, we particularly took the approach of doing most of what we needed to do just in contracts instead of in regulations. And that's, it sounds very arcane and obscure, but it's a really important point about how you accomplish things in state government. The more you do them in regulation, the more rigid and locked in they get. And the more you can do through contract language, the more you can change it as you learn over time. So one of the things that we were a leader in the country on was diversity and requiring in the contracts that all the public and private plans have the appropriate languages, people of the same culture, et cetera, for their beneficiaries or members. And so I, I feel like we made a lot of headway and other states copied us in that regard. Governor Wilson's budget problems continued as Kim Belche took over DHS. The budget environment though did create an opportunity to not only achieve um, appropriate and responsible 
uh, efficiencies, such as in our drug purchasing program, but it also provided a context for getting authority to move forward aggressively with managed care. And that, I think, is one of the, the legacies of the Wilson administration, um, led initially by Molly and then myself, um, really transforming Medi-Cal for women and children in terms of providing better access to more organized, coordinated services, and in so doing, improve access to prevention, early intervention, and better outcomes. Kim was passionate about women's health issues and formed the Breastfeeding Promotion Advisory Committee that still works to promote breastfeeding as the foundation of baby nutrition. Continuing to promote a healthy California, Belche fully supported the smoke-free bar legislation. Can we ask you something? Eight hours in here. It's like smoking almost a pack. More of us die of lung cancer and heart disease than in any other women's job. Please. Support the new smoke-free bar and restaurant policy. Support the new law. Then we promise to get your order right. It's about health, and it's about time. Even celebrating New Year's Eve with an investigative tour. I take my job very seriously, and so uh, on New Year's Eve before, uh, uh, on New Year's Eve of 1997, I, I thought it was important that I undertake some uh, primary research. So I, I made it a point as the Director of Health Services to visit about a half a dozen bars. Um, to ensure that the law was purposefully being uh, implemented come uh, January 1. Keep in mind that what we're talking about is fully implementing an existing law that's been on the books since 1995, and that's California's smoke-free workplace law. Uh, we have all been enjoying the health benefits uh, afforded us by that law, and now, as of January 1, over 800,000 employees of bars and taverns will enjoy similar health protections from the dangers of secondhand smoke. I'm terribly proud of how far California has come in terms of honoring uh, AB 13, which really was not just nation-leading, but um, world-leading in terms of cracking down on tobacco use in, in the workplace. The Marlboro man became impotent, and more hard-hitting anti-smoking ads were broadcast. I had my first cigarette when I was 13. When I found out how bad it was, I tried to quit, but I couldn't. They say nicotine isn't addictive. How can they say that? The Council of State Governments presented its Innovations in Government Award to the Medical Case Management Program. Developed by the department, the program makes sure that the most medically needed Californians will not fall through the cracks. Governor Davis appointed Diana Bonta as the first Latina and the first registered nurse to become director. We increased a million people that were enrolled in Medi-Cal, 700,000 children that came into the Healthy Families Program, very significant increase. We were also able to keep um, big tobacco on the run in terms of $45 million that was dedicated to a campaign that um, was measurable, that uh, sustained um, a change in terms of seeing the reduction of lives lost to tobacco. We also saw a reduction in teenage pregnancy because of our campaign in that area. We were able to implement the nurse staff ratios. We were able to implement programs dealing with breast and cervical cancer. She oversaw the opening of the California Public Health Lab in Richmond that continues to monitor food supplies, infectious diseases, and serves as a key partner with the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta. And then there were the very small things. There was a, uh, an issue that I took up that uh, probably will not make it in the history books, but it had to do with the fact that we put restrictions on oysters that were harvested in the Gulf states and their importation into California unless they had gone through a particular cleansing process people were dying in California from consuming them. We put in emergency regulations, and since that time, the nine deaths that used to occur every year have never occurred. So when I think back to my accomplishments, I think about that one and I smile because in the five years since, nine times five is 45 lives that are people that are there with their families and enjoying life because the Department of Health Services did the right thing and that is to protect the health of the citizens of California, of everyone in California. And that is a role that I think every director who's been here takes very seriously, and it is an honor and privilege to serve. 
and Baby Cow celebrated its 10th anniversary with an Emmy Award. Welcome to Baby Love. Sandra Shuri accepted the post of director under Governor Schwarzenegger in March 2004. She supports a bold agenda and is building on the agency's past accomplishments. The obesity uh, campaign mm -hmm. is going to be like the tobacco campaign. Uh, we know tobacco is still the number one preventable cause of death, but obesity is starting to rival it. And just as in tobacco, it's taken 20 or 30 years of really changing social norms we're going to need to do the same thing in obesity. This is my kitchen, and I make the rules. I decide what comes in and what we eat. Type 2 diabetes runs in my family, so a poor diet puts my kids at even more risk. That's why I'm serving more fruits and more vegetables. And I'm making sure they get some exercise every day. This is my kitchen, and healthy kids start here. Times are changing, and change is good. Be a champion for change. For mom-tested tips and recipes, contact the Network for Health. California. What's going on in your kitchen? DHS celebrated Medi-Cal's 40th anniversary in March of 2006, and Sandra speculates that the vision of the first director, Beverly Myers, may now be possible. I'm really enthusiastic that one of the things we may see in my career, and I really never dreamed it would be true, but we'll see a real reduction in the number of the uninsured. This is an historic time for public health. By signing Senate Bill 162, Governor Schwarzenegger established two agencies, each committed in different ways to the continuous improvement of the health of all Californians. You know, in California, we face a lot of disease um, and disasters, outbreaks, floods, forest fires, threats of terrorism, and we also face bioterror, disease outbreaks, and other risks such as pandemic flu. And now, with this new Department of Public Health, is an additional way to strengthen our state and to be ready. This department will be especially focusing on emergency preparedness and core public health challenges. It will maximize the state's resources, help us manage the with communicable diseases, chronic diseases, pandemic threats, and any other health challenges that are in our state. Dr. Mark Horton will become director of the Department of Public Health. I think what we're celebrating here today is the history of a very strong and powerful organization. The Department of Health Services uh, has a track record of taking actions that have significantly improved and impacted the health of the population of California. I think the governor gets it. I think the governor understands the importance of public health in the li daily lives of Californians, and I think he's understood the challenges uh, to the population of major public health threats. So I'm very proud and somewhat humbled by the history that's been in this organization to this point, and I'm very excited uh, to take over the leadership and lead this public health effort uh, into a new uh, and energized uh, initiative for the people in California. Sandra Shuri will continue her work to deliver health care to all Californians as director of the Department of Health Care Services. In our country today, we spend 15 percent of our gross domestic product on health care. I think we really have a right and a responsibility to demand high performance in terms of health outcomes. I'm really excited about being director of the Department of Health Care Services because I think we can use the purchasing power within the department to drive system and performance, system improvement in our health care delivery system. We directly fund and touch the lives, finance the care for nearly 7 million Californians. We have a responsibility, and I'm excited about the opportunity to try to get better performance from the system and better health outcomes for people using that purchasing power. When we have a vibrant people, when people are healthy and really living to their potential, that's when we know we've done a good job. When we see that the data on mortality, on vitality is improving, that's, that's really what we need, is knowing that our work is meaningful, that it is powerful, and it, it's what gives us a real sense of humility.